Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for joining me for today's video which is all about shoes, footwear for the season of autumn. So here in the UK we are embedded into autumn now. I know there's lots of you around the globe who haven't quite reached this point yet but here in the UK we are in autumn full swing which I am thrilled about because it is my favourite season. And what I wanted to do for this season is kind of go through my must-haves or wardrobe staples in the way of footwear. I was actually going to title this video Footwear I Can't Live Without, but I thought that that was a little bit dramatic because I can, of course, live without all the shoes and boots that you're about to see in today's video. But they are very much my go-tos and styles which fit in well with my style and footwear types that I'm just glad that I have at my disposal to style within my outfits. So without further ado, I'm going to crack on with footwear style number one, which is the Chelsea boot. Now the Chelsea boot, it is an iconic British staple. And I'm gonna go out on a bit of a limb here. I have absolutely no facts to back this up, but I would say most British women would have the Chelsea boot within their footwear collection. For good reason, I'll tell you why. So the Chelsea boots have both style and substance, which is a winning combination when it comes to footwear. They're super comfortable. So they're a really good go-to everyday kind of boot, the sort of boot that you can wear all day. You can do a bit of walking in it, but also they have style to them. They look great with jeans. You can also wear them with tailored trousers, depending on the kind of style you go and the condition you keep them in. Mine probably would not be a suitable work boot, but I feel like they would also work as a work boot as well, because they do have quite a sort of smart element to them. Now the design feature that I love most about a Chelsea boot is actually the fit around the ankle slash going up towards the leg. Obviously it will vary from style to style, brand to brand, but for the most part, a Chelsea boot, because of these elastic strips on both sides, it's supposed to fit snugly around the ankle. And this is something which I really like because I have large feet, but very skinny, slim little stick legs. And so for me, finding a boot which actually fits around the ankle and doesn't gape is quite a difficult thing to try and achieve. But a Chelsea boot, that is part of the design. It is essentially like a riding boot, a slip-on boot, which is why the majority of them have these little pull tabs here. And this elastic allows them to fit more snugly around the ankle, which for me makes them more wearable. You can kind of tuck them, or not tuck them, but you can wear them underneath trousers. You can even pull skinny jeans over the top of them, which is what I do with these quite a lot. And I just think it's more aesthetically pleasing than a boot that doesn't look like it fits properly. Mine are five, maybe even six years old now. And yes, I realize the irony in saying that they are a British staple and yet I've gone and bought a French brand, but I have very, very slim, narrow feet and Saint Laurent are very good for catering for that shape of foot, which is why I bought these. Um, but there are lots of different styles out there at the moment. I have linked some of my favorites. I've done a bit of trawling through the internet superhighway and linked some of my favorites down below in the description box. And that goes for all the shoes that you're about to see in today's video. Lots of different alternatives down there for you guys if anyone's looking at investing in some more styles for this season. Shoe category number two is loafers, but I'm also going to add in there brogues, whether they be slip on or lace up or buckled or whatever variety of brogue or loafer you like. It's essentially smart shoes. Now I'm a big fan of a loafer. I have a plethora of loafers within my footwear collection. And actually loafers are one of those footwear categories, if you will, or the, the footwear selection within my footwear wardrobe that doesn't get switched out from season to season. So you guys know that I do my big spring, summer and autumn, winter wardrobe changeovers. And a lot of the time, a lot of shoes will come out and go into storage and others will come in. The loafers are a permanent fixture within my shoe wardrobe because I do wear them all year round. Now loafers fit in really well with my wardrobe and my style, which is why I like them so much. If I had to 
explain my style. It would be quite minimal um, and it would be a mix of smart and casual, but meshed together in one kind of outfit. Obviously not every single outfit, but that's the majority of the time what you will see me in. So for example, if I were wearing a pair of jeans, which I would very much put in the casual category, then my kind of rule of thumb or the way that my head works when I'm putting an outfit together is then I need to kind of offset that with something a bit smarter, something a bit more tailored. So I'll always add in a piece of tailoring, whether it be a blazer, that's where my love of blazers comes from, or a tailored coat if it were kind of for this time of year or even for winter. And then on the bottom half, I kind of have a bit of a free run. So I could either go with a trainer, which I will get to later, or I could go with a loafer. And I do wear loafers a lot. So these ones here are the ones that I get asked about the most because I have these in a couple of colors in the leather colorway. I also have a summer version as well. These are the Gucci Brixton loafers. Yes, they are quite expensive. Um, last time I checked, they were 545. They've probably gone up in price because that's what happens with premium brands, but they are definitely worth the money. They have a super soft and supple leather, which is why I always advise going for the Brixtons over the Jordans. Because the Jordans don't have the collapsible back, they are a much stiffer, more structured leather, and they would require breaking in, which I am just not a fan of breaking in shoes. It's one of my biggest pet peeves to have to do. These have always been comfortable from day one, don't require any breaking in, um, and they're just really amazing quality as well. Really good investment for your wardrobe if you're looking to invest in sort of core classics. Okay, now moving on to these. These are actually a new addition to my wardrobe. They are from Arquette and again like the Gucci Brixtons they are a super soft and supple leather so they don't need any breaking in. They also have the seam on the back here which means that they do have the collapsible heel but again I just don't wear them with the collapsible heel and they have the design feature of this very sort of blunt square toe which is a big trend for this season in the way of footwear. So these come in two colours, they come in black which I have here and they also come in a cream, it's almost like a yellowy cream colour and I actually also have those as well because when I find a shoe that I really like I tend to buy them in any colour they come in that fits in with my wardrobe. So yeah, I am slightly obsessed with those loafers this season. Now, as I mentioned earlier, loafers are a permanent fixture in my shoe wardrobe, so they are something that I will wear all year round. Currently in autumn, so I am kind of going with them without any socks or anything on. I'm going with like a bare ankle situation because it is still relatively mild from day to day. However, once we move into winter, I am not afraid to wear socks with my loafers and to have my socks on show. Some of you guys might have seen that over on my Instagram or on my blog where you can see all my outfits and it is very much a look that I... I just like, I think it's kind of cool to be honest. Um, so my tip would be don't be scared of socks. Okay, moving on to my third shoe style. And actually this one's very specific because it is a specific brand and a specific style within that brand of shoe. And it is the Converse High Tops. I have been a lover of Converse, Converse footwear at least, for many years now. I have a very extensive range of Converse in my shoe wardrobe, but the high tops for me are always, they're the style that has the biggest pull, just because of versatility and wearability. I just feel like because they go a little bit higher up your leg, they're a bit more wearable for definitely the colder months. Right, now this specific style here is the Chuck 70s. Not to be confused with the all-star Chuck Taylor high tops. So there's a few differences. First kind of physical design difference or style difference about the Chuck 70s is the sole. It's slightly thicker than the regular All-Stars. It's also more of an off-white cream color, whereas the standard All-Star high tops are quite a stark bright white. And it also has, as you can see on the rubber, a little bit more of like a gloss or a sheen to it. Another difference is the canvas. It's much thicker and more rigid and more structured on these Chuck 70s, which I actually don't think is a bad point. I haven't experienced any kind of rubbing that you might 
have with any stiffer kind of shoe. I just feel like they feel a little bit more structured and almost a bit more supportive around the ankle. And lastly, the final difference is the logo or the badge or motif, if you will, which is always on the inside of any high tops. Um, this is just a very basic black and white, which I think is probably what draws me to these Chuck 70s over the classics. This is also a little bit more 3D, whereas on the classic ones, it's more of like an iron-on motif, which can rub off quite easily. So this one does add a little bit more of a luxurious feel and a bit more sort of well-made quality to it. In terms of styling, I will wear these with pretty much anything and everything. Thing. Again, as I've said, my style is a mixture of casual and not so casual smart tailoring and I just think that they, they work equally well across the board. You can wear them with denim, you can wear them with skirts. I've seen a lot of outfits with um, slip skirts and a pair of Converse and I think that looks really edgy and really cool. Um, and I love to pair mine, as you would have seen on my Instagram, with a pair of tailored trousers. That's probably one of my go-to kind of outfit combinations of the moment. And on to the Marmite footwear of the season, which is is of course the chunky boot. These ones are from Arquette and again because this is a massive trend for this season there are so many styles to choose from so if you want to get in on the whole chunky boot trend for me it's also worth mentioning that when I if I'm wearing a trend I don't buy trends because they're a trend. If I see something that happens to be a trend, I will look at it and I will think, okay, yes, I like that. Will I wear that afterwards when it is no longer a trend? And that for me is always a really kind of important analysis of something that needs to be done before I invest any money into it. And when it comes to the chunky boot, I am more than happy to wear these when they are no longer in because they are comfortable. They're so comfortable, they're really wearable and they're also very practical because they're leather and obviously a substantial amount of rubber so they are a really good boot for rainy weather as well. Now you do get a little bit of a mild leg workout when you're wearing these because of the hefty amount of rubber that's on the sole but for the most part once you kind of get used to having that weight on your feet they are incredibly comfortable. And for me, they've actually been a really easy boot to style. So I've been wearing these quite a lot. Again, you might've seen some of my outfits recently over on Instagram. I've been styling these, admittedly with a lot of very all black looks, just because I'm very drawn to that at the moment. And I just think that they have quite a gothic vibe to them. So naturally they're gonna work well with an all black outfit. And for anyone who is perhaps a little bit dubious about the chunky boot trend or any kind of chunky footwear when it comes to having larger feet, I am in the Bigfoot club. I have a size 41 foot, it's a 40.5 to a 41, it depends on the brand. These are a size 41. And yeah, admittedly, I was a little bit dubious about kind of having a chunkier boot on my size of foot, especially when my legs are so like little sticks. I have quite large feet and very skinny little ankles and legs. So I was a little bit worried, but to be honest with you, I think that they look really cool. I like them. I very much like the aesthetic. So yes, anyone else out there in the pig foot club, fret not. I have tried and tested them for you. So if they fit your aesthetic and you are just naturally drawn to them, then they get a thumbs up from me. Now we had chunky boots. I am now moving on to chunky trainers. These are the New Balance 530s. This particular colorway, impossible to find, literally impossible to find. Well, almost impossible. I have actually found one source of where you can get your hands on these. So those are linked down below in the description box. But actually these 530s, they've become such a popular style of late that they have been brought out in a plethora of colors. So there's plenty there to knock yourselves out on. These are really lightweight, despite the kind of chunky sole. This is actually quite a nice lightweight sort of foam rather than a heavy rubber like on the boots. And they have a lot of mesh on them as well, which makes them really breathable. Now, trainers for me are a huge part of my wardrobe. 
I think my footwear choices shifted massively from when I was in my 20s to now being in my 30s. And I definitely bear comfort in mind a lot more than what I used to. Um, so trainers for me, obviously you will see me wearing trainers a lot in my outfits. And I think they are a very core kind of staple of what my style is all about. And for me personally, my trainers get a hefty amount of wear. They're definitely the footwear option that I would reach for if we were going to, I don't know, the supermarket or to run some errands, regardless of the type of outfit that I was wearing, even if I was wearing tailored trousers. I would probably reach for some comfy trainers. Moving on to my next shoe category, which is knee high or tall boots. Now I actually don't have, this is probably the one kind of category of footwear that I don't have a mass amount of. I think I have, let's see, these, I have three pairs of tall boots. So I have one pair of Stuart Weitzman over the knee Highland boots. I have these and then I have a pair of brown mock croc chunky heeled knee high boots as well. And actually I feel like, because they're not the kind of boot that I wear on a daily basis. To be honest, they're probably not the kind of boot that I would wear even on a weekly basis. But every now and then throughout the autumn winter seasons, I do feel like this is the kind of boot that I need. And these in particular, they're from Dear Francis and they are magnificent. They are beautiful boots. They're black leather printed or embossed with like this mock croc texture to them. And one thing I love about Dear Francis boots is that they always kind of think about when they're designing the boots, they always think about practicality and comfort. And yes, they do a lot of high heels as well, but these I just think, are a really wearable boot. Granted, I wouldn't be walking around in them all day long. They're not like, you know, if you were gonna go on a city break, you wouldn't be, you know, trudging around a city wearing these, but they are definitely a boot that I could keep on and do a, a relative amount of walking in because they have a really wearable heel. The front of the toe, even though it's a pointed toe, which I feel is a really elegant feature, it doesn't feel too narrow, so it doesn't pinch my feet. Now that obviously is very specific to my feet. I have narrow feet, so obviously it will depend on your shape of foot. But for me, they just are such a classic staple to have. They're one of those things that's kind of like a classic black court shoe. They're not gonna get a daily amount of wear or a weekly amount of wear, but they're one of those staples which is definitely good to have when you wanna amp up an outfit or when you've got perhaps a slightly more dressier occasion to go to. Right, now along the same vein as the knee-high boots, I also have as my next category, court shoes. Because of course, again, they're not the sort of shoe that I would get a daily amount or necessarily a weekly amount of wear out of, but they are very much a wardrobe classic, which I would feel like my wardrobe would be not complete without. Now for some people, these are gonna be an absolute staple that they get daily wear out of, especially if you work in you know, an office environment, then a court shoe would be an absolute must have for your kind of daily workwear wardrobe. But for me, they get occasional use. Now these ones here are my new Manolo Maysells, which you'll have seen in some of my previous videos recently. They have a really wearable heel. It's literally five centimeters, so it's not super high. They are quite comfortable. However, they have a few drawbacks to them. They're mules, which I know mules aren't gonna be everyone's cup of tea, especially for comfort and wearability. You can't walk particularly fast in a pair of mules. They will fly off at any given opportunity, so stairs are something you have to be careful on when wearing mules. And these ones in particular, I did specifically want them in black suede, but obviously suede on a shoe limits you in terms of being able to wear them on any kind of wet or rainy day. Leather is always a more practical option. But these are an absolute classic. I obsessed over these for so long, and I'm glad that I have them within my wardrobe, my shoe wardrobe now. And they definitely give a little bit of like amping up, but they definitely have that ability to dress up an outfit that otherwise might be quite casual, even if it is just a jeans and t-shirt and blazer kind of look. Okay, my next shoe category, I'm just calling heeled boots. 
And that's just because obviously I featured chunky boots, which are flat, Chelsea boots, which tend to be flat, Converse, which are also flat. And I just feel like we need a bit of a heeled option in here. Sometimes if you've got a longer trouser, if you just want to wear heels, you know, I'm, despite the fact that I'm leaning more towards lower heels these days, I do still have those days where I think, no, do you know what? I think I wanna wear a pair of heels. At the end of the day, for me, it comes down to just having options. And I know some people will think that that's just an excuse for me to have an excessive amount of shoes. And I don't care because I do like to have options. For me, when I look at my shoe wall or my shoe wardrobe, I can kind of see everything that I've got. And I brought these ones down with me just because they are a tan leather. And I know I featured quite a lot of black in today's video. I have a lot of black in my wardrobe, which I'm very unapologetic about, but I wanted to kind of feature something with a bit of color to it. And these ones I have worn quite a lot recently as well. They're from And Other Stories. They were actually from last year. I don't think that they're available anymore, but I'll leave a link down below just in case they have restocked them because And Other Stories do tend to do that quite a lot. Um, but I have also found some similar alternatives to these as well. And yeah, I just think heeled boots, sometimes you might need them if you've got a longer trouser or a longer pair of jeans. Sometimes you just feel like wearing heels. And for me, when it comes to heels, I am, unless it's a court shoe, I do find that I am veering away now from stilettos and I do prefer more of a block or like these are kind of like a, they're an odd shaped heel actually. They're kind of like a half moon. And that for me just adds to the comfort factor a little bit more by staying away from stilettos. And moving on to my final footwear essential for the autumn season. And it is of course the Wellington boot aka wellies and I wouldn't be a proper British person if I didn't have at least one pair of wellies within my footwear wardrobe. I actually have two pairs so I'm double British. These ones are they're by Hunter actually both of my Wellington boots are by Hunter. These ones in particular are I think these are just called the classic short and I actually have the welly socks in here as well these are also by hunter they've got the little thing on so you put your foot in doing a terrible job of doing this as an example and then the sock rolls over the top so that the logo is also there as well i've done a terrible job of <laughs> demonstrating that i'll film a cutaway that will be much better so yes these are i think these are called the classic short and these are by no means any kind of fashion staple whatsoever they are just my practical dog walking wellies however the uk at times can be a relatively wet place to live especially over the last couple of weeks we have had a deluge of rain and I have a slightly more fashionable style of welly boot, which is a taller, slimmer fitting. Um, they are a high gloss. They're actually just a really nice boot, I personally think. They're kind of like a riding boot, but just made out of rubber. So they are super practical um, for wearing in the rain. And actually, while I have you guys, next Sunday, there is going to be a video all about my tips, um, I haven't actually titled the video yet, so I'm just kind of rambling here, but practical tips for getting dressed and styling yourself in wet weather in the rain. So yes, if you live in a relatively wet climate, stay tuned for that one. But yes, the taller shape of boots, they're kind of more of my fashiony boots that I would wear with like my oversized coats, my tailored coats, that kind of thing, especially if the weather were just grim and disgusting as it has been over the last couple of weeks. So yes, welly boots, thus ends this video. And thank you very much for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments or just jokes even, please do leave them down in the comment section below and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.